Hey everyone, welcome, welcome, welcome to another Friday live stream with Trotec. How's everyone doing today? Hey guys, <laughs> sorry, that was, that was just a general question out, out into the universe. Uh, if you guys are on the chat, say hello, let us know where you're from. My name is Lev. Uh, we're joined here with the fabulous Stephen Colley, who's just in the next uh, office there. Hi Stephen, how's it going? Hey, hello everyone. And our very, very special guest, uh, Florian Martin. Did I say that name right? Yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Florian from the beautiful region of Upper Austria, our headquarters, global headquarters. Uh, thank you so much for, for spending your Friday evening uh, with us today. It's morning here, but it's evening there. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having the chance to be with you and tell you a little bit about the things that we have here. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. So, I mean, Florian, if you if you want to kind of uh, maybe introduce yourself a little, uh, let us know what you do for Trotech um, and what this kind of webinar is going to be about. Yeah, I'm the product manager here uh, at Trotech for the Garbo systems, and um, today I want to show you something that we call the virtual rotary. Um, that is a possibility to to mark on 3D surfaces. Very, very simple. Very, very easy. And uh, we call it virtual rotary because it's it's really like uh, having a rotary, but very much more easier, faster, more simpler. So I, it's really a nice thing. We launched in January this year, and um, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to 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 show it to you. So, and you you actually wanted to give us a little tour of uh, where you're located, and I think that'll be interesting for everyone. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think I just started with that. Yeah, if, it's, yeah. if it's right for you, yeah. Yeah, so, of course. Uh, at, the, at the moment, I'm sitting here in the in our application lab. So um, if you ever come here to Austria, uh, you, you said beautiful Austria at the moment. I can maybe I can show you outside the window. Uh, <laughs> it's beautiful, but it's I said it's not sound of music beautiful here. Um, <laughs> When you when you walk here, when you come into the door into our application lab, uh, you will see here the big machines like uh, the SP two thousand we have here in front, and the five hundred in the back. We have also some printing here because this is the application lab, so we are doing also print and cut application here. Very when cool. You come, when you come in the background, you see here the, the, the our our good standard plotters, the Rayjet series, the speedy series and it's coming here also in the background and when you come to the to the to the to the left most the most corner in the background then you get come to the galvo systems <laughs> and we also <laughs> have uh, we also have uh, a q for a q400 here and uh, here is an r500, r500. and uh, here is the first Galgo system. I'm not talking about that today. That's our entry series U300, uh, a fiber Galgo system. Then we are starting here with the speed marker. Oh, sorry, Florian. I think uh, I think you got stuck there for a second. Stephen, can uh, can you still hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm back. Yeah, there you are. Uh, I was just wondering, so the application lab uh, itself, so what, what is the purpose of the application lab in Austria? What do you, what do you guys do there? Um, the application lab here has uh, two different uh, two different things we're doing here. Uh, one is that we're doing customer applications. So if you have some special application uh, you want to have tested, uh, either from the from our from our daughter companies or from the customers, we do it here because we have a lot of different machine, different lasers. Um, and also, if customers come here, uh, we have a, a special showroom. But this is more like a mixture between showroom and uh, application demonstration uh, working area. Um, development is working here, so it's it's really a, um, a place where where everyone can 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 work when he wants and now now it's empty only because it's late in austria right usually it's full of yeah. <laughs> there's, there's no people there. it's empty and, and that's and that's why the reason why i can can he can come here without the mask so that's good for right. the, from the time from the timing um, right, right. well i, I mean uh, yeah sorry if uh, are you gonna so you're gonna start with a 1300 then yeah i'm gonna start with the 1300. Us, uh, the, if you want to give us a quick kind of uh 
show what, what the machine looks like and uh, we can get started. Yeah, yeah. So here is a, a, a CO2 laser. We are not using them today, a CO2 Galvo, but here is the, the 1300. What you can see here, yeah, it's a little bit, a little bit bigger than the other one. Uh, we have the monitor on the side. Uh, what is a 1300? Um, a 1300 is a, a Galvo system that can be moved uh, with the axis. So we have here uh, the X system um, for the for the for the set and uh, the X direction. And here the table is moving in the Y direction. So so there is X and Y. Is there a Z uh, Z as well? There is a set as well. So we have uh, one second. Yeah. Sorry, we have we have uh, we have an X and a Y and a set axis, and um, also the, the the virtual rotary that is uh, a special axis that is an uh, an optical uh, element inside uh, the head. So we have here one axis that you cannot see that is is inside. Here you have the set axis in the back that is moving up and down. The X axis moving from the left to the right, and the Y axis here going. Backwards and forwards. Right. OK. Um, we have a fiber galvo here. It's a, a 20 watt uh, MOPA. 20 watt uh, is our, uh, I say, um, the most the most common the most common uh, laser source we use for for marking. And uh, the MOPA is uh, a special laser, uh, has a special capability because you can uh, change the pulse width, and that's uh, interesting for marking because it gives you the possibility to 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 mark in um, uh, stainless steel in, in uh, give them annealing color uh, annealing black annealing on stainless steel or also uh, um, have the possibility to mark some some plastics and uh, yeah 20 watt is is normally very very sufficient for for most of the marking purposes we can go up to 100 watt uh, if it's necessary, but here it's more for deep engraving or engraving in steel. Right. And I mean, can, can you tell us a little bit about, I mean, the virtual rotary concept itself? I mean, where did it kind of come from? Where was the need for it? Yeah. Um, the, uh, the need is more or less uh, when you're... One second. I'm just showing the, the promo video as well for people who <laughs> want to see what the virtual rotary... Actually, you're there on the video, so, <laughs> so there we go. So, so here I'm a, a double at the moment. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. What you what you do is um, uh, when you have when you have something like this here, you have uh, a cylindrical object like the the, the tumbler. Yeah, the tumbler here, um, and you have your graphic. Uh, your graphic is two D. I saw a very nice video how you do a rotary video, and when you have the rotary, you normally. Uh, do something like this. So you so you you you, you turn the rotary and the and, and stay in focus and the part moves around. And what we are doing in our software and with this virtual rotary is we are wrapping this around. So this is actually what is happening, and that is what you will see later directly in the software. And therefore, um, you don't need to turn the the part anymore. We really wrap around our our graphic and our focus around the, the the object, and depending on your application, it can be uh, up to 100 times faster than with the with the rotary, just because you don't have to don't need to put the thing in, clamp it somewhere, and then move it slowly. But it's, it's just putting it in and and marking. That's the the nice thing. Um, you ask why did we did we do this? Um, it's really because uh, uh, when you ever worked with a rotary, it's more or less a little bit painful and complicated, and we just want to make it easier and um, and and simpler. Yeah, I'm just I'm, I'm just showing a quick video here. Like this is what our flatbed speedy series like it's rotary so it's basically one at a time i know dave stevens from the states actually made a laser hack where he put a bunch like three together but it's yeah. still very limited to doing one piece of cylindrical object at a time if you're doing promo items or industrial application like any kind of pipes or anything like that so yeah. in this in this way you could do multiple uh not just cylindrical but you're going to show us uh weird uh shapes and objects as well right yeah 
And uh, one thing is, uh, of course, you have the possibility here uh, with the tumbler that you can put them in a rotary, but in, uh, in, in the industrial background or in the industrial context, um, it's sometimes happened that you have. Sorry, Florian, you got stuck there again. Sorry. <laughs> we, we, have a, we, we have a new firewall today, so maybe this is <laughs> no, the problem. No worries, no worries. It's all good. Sorry, what were you saying? When you when you when you have when you are in the in the industrial context and you have an oddly shaped part that cannot be put inside a rotary, but you want to, but you have a cylindrical part on this part that you mark, mark then it's also very nice with the virtual rotary here. Um, also, if you don't have the time like uh, putting it in a rotary and moving it and you want to have some automated process or you have a lot of things you want to mark then it's of course uh, a very nice to do this and uh, you can also mark inside somewhere if you if you need with the virtual rotary perfect um okay so are we gonna do a quick uh, software demo yeah, I, I would, I would, I would try to show you what I want to do here. Um, sure. Yeah. So, so uh, I have, I have uh, one part. Uh, I would. Sorry, uh, got stuck there again. And I, I should, uh, I should probably correct Florian. It's, uh, I, I, it's my mistake. I think that's just a water bottle. The tumbler is the, like the the big uh, coffee mugs. Yeah. Sorry, okay. Florian. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm, I'm not so I'm not so familiar with the technical terms of this. No, bottles. it's just my fault. I, I, I thought I thought, I thought Tumblr in my, my head, but it wasn't a Tumblr. Yeah, go go ahead. Okay. Sorry. Uh, of course, it's 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 uh, uh, here. It's, we have a we have a, a fiber laser, so it's more or less like metal here. In this case, we have a, a stainless steel tum um, not tumbler but bottle that you, <laughs> that is uh, with anodized uh, uh, toppings. Here I have some stainless steel part. Uh, where I want to show that you can mark on a on a on an angled plane here. So I'm not putting in it like this, but it's really like this. Uh, here I will try to mark inside this this uh, uh, steel um, yeah steel bowl, yeah, and then right. and then here uh, at the end I also try some some very simple uh, round objects. Um, with, with, the, with, with this variety and the possibility to combine all these objects, um, yeah, that's more or less what you can do, or that gives you an overview on what you can do with the, with the virtual rotary. Wow, that's interesting to see. Okay. <laughs> so I will, I will try to set up now the, the, my camera inside so you can see the, yeah. the marking and the process that we are doing. And I can add uh, the software itself. So right now, the, everyone can see the software as well and the, okay. the camera. OK, so. Uh, for the first. Yeah, sorry, go ahead, Florian. So, OK. Um, uh, when you're when you're working with the with the software, it's uh, like you start the software here with a blank screen. Right. Uh, normally, when you're doing industrial applications, you're starting with doing a, a data matrix or any other codes, or you do uh, um, some serial numbers or things like that. That's what uh, what the speed mark is really is really good for, and where it's made for. It's uh, dynamic content. So uh, in this case, we have a static text inside, but you also can put in a date, time, or uh, a serial number, or you have any other content inside this code um, from the from the industrial side, and then. Um, you can also put something like, okay, I have here a text inside, and uh, instead of using this text as a static text, I can also put in here a serial number, uh, some like K okay, counting up, starting, and um, let, let's very very short the the speed mark software. Uh, what you see here happens when I put in some element is on the on this bar here, um, all the elements appear. And then let's also start to end the, 
the program how it's how it's uh, going yeah, down. Yeah, we, we actually we actually have a, a number of um, uh, webinars that we did specifically for the Speedmark software. Okay. Uh, I mean, uh, so you don't have to get too too technical on the Speedmark software. If you guys are interested in the software itself, uh, just type in Speedmark uh, software in um, on YouTube, and then we, we we dive a little bit more deeper into the software. Uh, Stephen, if you could give us a, a quick maybe. Uh, you know, the difference between the Speedmark and uh, the job control software or like the, the new Ruby software that you, you feel that, you know, from your experience, what, what's the main kind of feel between the two softwares? Well, I mean, the Speedmark software is more um, flow driven towards an industrial content. And I think that's where Ruby's headed um, as it goes through its development stages. Um, but in terms of uh, comparing this to job control, it's um, it's more open to a lot of the integration logic um, and scripting to to um, you know to develop a sequence of uh, of flows that would work in an industrial context. Um, and it's not necessarily has to be um, specific to Galvo, but at this stage, yes, it's for all the Galvo units. Um, but the software is more more towards the industrial. I, th I think that's where they where Ruby is probably headed um, in the long term. And for those people that I mean don't know anything about lasers in general, can can we have a quick maybe explanation of the difference between a flatbed and a Galvo? Like, what is a Galvo laser for for people? Well, the the, the flatbed machines they they what what um, one of the terminologies is it's a mechanically steered laser. So it's using a, a physical X and a physical Y axis um, with mirrors attached to them, and that's relaying or, or steering the beam, uh, the laser beam. But in the case of Galvo, the same still applies, but it all happens inside of the Galvo head. So it also has uh, axes in the head, um, but the light travels naturally, um, well, the light travels at a constant, but because of the mirrors, um, and the and the, the the laser source being in such close proximity, and then the oscillating of the uh, the two mirrors, um, the machine is not as um, uh, it's it's more uh, it's going to be much faster because it's not constrained by the mechanical resistances and the sizes that um, that that you have in the larger machines. So it would be. I love I love, I love Florian's uh, demonstration. That, that was the, that was the yeah. mirrors, right, Florian? Thank you. Yeah, the, two mirrors, <laughs> the, mirrors, the two mirrors oscillate inside that head and they deflect the deflect and, and steer the beam down through the lens and onto the object so actually they very they they're more similar than what you think but naturally the the speed is the is the factor it's a major difference with the with the speed so uh, the scan head is the big difference yeah or, or what's called a galvanometer and that's why we call it a galva so um yeah, I think that's. Oh, uh, I, think that's well, yeah. I, I learned something new today. There you go. <laughs> okay, sorry, Florian. Go go right ahead. No, 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 no problem. So, so in, in, in from from the from the the, the starting po point of a starting perspective, I think the the biggest difference is you you're doing with the Galvo and with the flatbed. You're always bringing the laser to the material, but with the flatbed, you have a very big working area, and you can cut very nice. And with the Galvo, you have a very small working area, but you cannot really cut thick materials. And, uh, and yeah, but you're you're much much more faster in this small area than compared to a flatbed. Yeah, that's because why most most industry like most industrial customers would go for the Galvo because it's more for for part marking uh, applications versus you know you have a larger flatbed for for promo items for I mean. All, all, mo most of the other stuff, but I mean, you could, sh as you can see here, you can still do promotional items on on the galvas yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's it's really a, a question on on your workflow and how much you are producing. If you're going into thousands and more than thousands, then you're very very fast. You're coming to the galvo and you're leaving the flatbed because it's it's just the logistic and how you work. But if you're in the hundreds and it, and below, then then it's normally you're fine with the flatbed. Awesome. So, okay. so I, I would I would just now show you how you get from 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 any kind of graphic to 
the to, to this virtual rotary because that's the 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 thing. So, but but as I said, okay, you, you you said everyone knows the software, so I will not go with the boring codes. I will just take <laughs> some some random not, not, graphics. Uh, definitely not everybody knows, but uh, we we just <laughs> want to kind of show the the, the virtual uh, rotary side of it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was I was looking for for some for some for some graphics that uh, that is um, a little bit more complicated and um, and maybe maybe a little nicer. And I found something uh, um, on the internet here. Um, you, 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 can... couldn't, you couldn't find the Toronto Raptors logo or something. <laughs> <laughs> I, I knew that I, I need uh, that I have the wrong one. Uh, whatever I pick, <laughs> it's it's the penguins. It's the Pittsburgh Penguins. I, I don't know okay. how I know. I'm not a hockey uh, watcher, <laughs> but yeah, I know that. <laughs> so uh, what you, what you can what you can do here here you have you have uh, you have all all the things, all the possibilities, all the the filling options that you have, uh, uh, and and things like that, but. The question is that now, if you laser this, it would be flat. And now I want to, to wrap it around my cylinder. And the nice thing is that we have here completely integrated this new uh, feature here, the 3D projection. So I say, OK, I want now to create a new 3D object. And I got this. Um, three uh, possibilities for, for a start. And the, uh, of course, at the moment, I'm starting with the cylinder. and. Um, the very nice thing is now that we are starting to mix this um, the thing you see here on the on the on the screen with what happens uh, on the machine. So I said I want to do a cylinder with two points and a diameter, and now there comes the mixture between these two. Because you can see here when I move my mouse over that I get highlighted uh, a diameter, one point, and another point. And, and this is now exactly the matching that I have to do. So um, when you look at the camera, you can see this. I hope you can see this here. This is yeah, I'm, I'm actually showing both uh, both the software and uh, and the bottom okay. as well. So uh, we have the, the the red point here. And what I what I have to do? Uh, it's, Sorry, can you move it a little bit down the the camera? Yeah, yeah, yeah. perfect. That's perfect. That's, yeah. Yeah. Perfect. So what I do now here with my with my uh, X and my set axis, I'm moving this point and I move it to the highest to the highest uh, uh, point on top where I want my graphic. I want my graphic here and I want this to be the top. And that's also the red point that you can see here in the graphic. So right. I, I adjust I adjust my focus. This is what I'm, I'm doing here. And then I uh, adjust my my position. And then I said, okay, this red point here, this should be the the the, the current X position. So I know the Y position is 100 because that is here, and the Z position is zero because uh, yeah, and the Z. So this is this is now my my first point, and that is that is that is here. And now what I have to do is um, I'm going here on the up to the bottom and say, okay, here at the bottom, I, I want my second point. So um, once again, I'm moving down uh, with my axis. So the, the, the actual table is moving. In this case, the table is moving, yeah, but right. because in, the, the Y axis here is, is the table. And now I say, okay, fine. I apply this X position. Mm, okay. Okay, and then I have the, the last thing I have to do is to enter the diameter. For entering the diameter, I'm relying to high tech. <laughs> and it's about 70.7 in this case. Yeah. And what, no, what now happens in the, in, the, in the background is that with this information, with these three points, um, we created uh, the 3D shape. All Sorry, Florian, got, got stuck there again. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, with sorry. The, with these three points, I created 
my uh, the, the cylinder that is starting here on top where the where the first point was here on the bottom where the second point was and the cylinder is now in 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 a 3d um, representation of the reality and um, and this bird uh, this this penguin is now uh, positioned as it is uh, here if I move my bird now around I can see that it's directly moving in the in the 3d um, so it gives me a pretty good preview where it is uh, positioned. Sorry, Florian, uh, just, a, just a quick question. Uh, uh, that, that screen on your right, where the plane, the 3D plane is, the, yeah. the, the entire plane, is it kind of like job control where it's a representation of the physical table? So this is like, the, this is in the center bottom of the physical table? Is that how I understand yes. it? Yes, this is, this is the... the the, the maximum area in the 1300 where I can put and mark my objects. Right. So you can visualize, you can put like 20 bottles, let's say, on there and see where each bottle is going to be based uh, in, in the software. Yeah. So I'll just try to open it. I'm now, I have this project here. I hope so. No, I'm the USB so you can see it. It's the one that we've done uh, in the video. Uh, we have now the, the, the same surface and then you can see there are a lot of bottles. And if I click one program by the other program here, go, going oh, all the wow. bottles in inside uh, and also the caps. Uh, and, and that's how you set up. When you do the first setup, that's the, the kind of setup you're doing. Um, you also... Uh, of course, within this program, you have all the possibilities of, of speedmark, and uh, this shows where on the on the on the on the working area everything is placed. So I go back to my penguin. Uh, we got a quick question from. Um Laser Tech Botswana, uh, Florian, this function is something that would be much needed in our field uh, of engraving as well. Any plans in the near far future to bring this option, if possible, to the U50? I think, uh, <laughs> I think, oh, the, the U50, so just the, the Galvo head. Just the Galvo head. Um, the thing is, um, with when you're doing, when you're, when you're using a, a, a DS, so the, the the hardware, the hardware you need is, uh, it's called dynamic shifter. It's the DS. And, uh, this dynamic shifter has the, is, has the issue. Um, when you're doing this, uh, you can have a, a speed marker 50. So just the head with this 3D option, but, um, you will have difficulties when doing the setup. That's the most, the most problem because, uh, as you've seen before, I, I put, I put in these three points. Or these two points, and in reality, I can't move it there. So um, it's a little bit a, a, a hack, a hacking around if you do it in uh, with the um, with the speed marker fifty. But you can do it. So I would not, I would not, I would not say that you're not uh, you're not able to do it. But it in it, it it's restricted on what you can do. Let's say and how you yeah, do it. And the the U the U300, which is kind of the Rayjet series, that that won't be available. I think right. Uh, not not planned at the moment. Uh, right. um, to be to be sure to be to to make it very very short. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. So, okay. Well, yeah. Thanks, guys. Keep asking questions uh, for sure. Yeah. We got uh, we got the expert here, so this is uh, this is your chance. I can I can tell you I have not, we have not launched it yet, but with the with the U fifth with the U three hundred, uh, you can use with uh, you can use now the rotary, the standard rotary. Um, with with direct mark so if, if someone is interested there the the u300 now supports direct mark and rotary uh as a as a standard so so a, an additional information perfect so i will now sorry florian uh i think we lost I you again saw. i saw yeah. i saw I will, I will try to, to now uh, put in my, my camera inside. Um, when I move, let's see, yeah, it's working. 
So we already talked a lot, so I will now try to start. Did it did it give you um, the time on the Speedmark software? How long is going to take? Yes, you can see the time on the Speedmark software, but you cannot see the overall time. You can see the time for each uh, for each um, for each part. I can show you afterwards. At the moment, it's running, so I think it will be about two minutes. Two minutes. The reason here is that I'm what you see here on the left side. I'm doing three or four different uh, turns because I want to to uh, to get a special effect on my on my. Uh, on my Tumblr, and uh, not my Tumblr. You, 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 you said Tumblr, <laughs> and, and I'm always. Sorry, I, I screwed you up for life, man. You're gonna keep calling it Tumblr. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, because I tried now to to do some mixing of annealing and engraving, and and to, just to show what you can do, uh, what what kind of things you can do with the with this um, with this mixture of 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 three D and. Um, and uh, uh, Galvo, uh, you've seen the speed already uh, in our in our demonstration. So that's therefore I'm not so so keen on the speed here. I do a little a little bit uh, uh, something different. You will see the result. <laughs> yeah. Well, the the first marking was really really quick, and then uh, I guess what you're doing now is just going over it for uh, I mean for what exactly? I guess, uh, I guess we'll see we'll see the results. <laughs> You will see the result. You can see it a little bit here. I try to do something that is called annealing, and when you do annealing, and you do it in in a, I say, uh, not an, an 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 very industrial, um, uh, but more uh, a playful way. You can try to to do some colors on the on the on the steel box. So what I try here is to to make. A, uh, uh, a part of the the penguin yellow, and that's what's happening at the moment. Oh, oh! You actually you went there. Wow! You're gonna <laughs> you're gonna. Did you did you test this already? Uh, I I tried it uh, very quickly just before uh, before this webinar, uh, but with a with an old bottle that was was well, that already twenty or thirty different uh, uh, um, uh, um, markings on it. So I'm not quite sure how the the I, I'm also very uh, excited what the the result look at the end. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, I just want to show people. Uh, so Florian's using the MOPA, uh, which you could technically, I mean, as you can see, it takes some more time than just marking it with uh, with a, like, a, like a fiber laser, but you can actually yeah. make colors on uh, on steel, on stainless steel. And I guess, well, this isn't stainless steel necessarily, right? This is uh, some kind of coating on top of, uh, on top of the bottles. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, there's a coating on top. But what I've done with my first, uh, the, the, the quick movement is that I uh, put away the, the the coating on top. So the coating is now away, and then I have the the the, the, the stainless steel that is beyond that. Uh, and then uh, I try to anneal this steel that is beyond the the the, the coating. Yeah. So if you're if you just want to mark the bottles with. With a with a logo, I mean, you, you saw it took like seconds to, to engrave, but this is yeah, yeah. after he took the coating off. Now he's trying he's trying to to do some color in there, but uh, that's yeah. that's risky for him. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but but you will see. Uh, uh, I think it should be it should be done by now. And then you see the the second process that it's just the the, the white uh, engraving. That's much more faster. That's what you normally expect as as speed from. Uh, from a speed marker. Right. So this is real time, guys. If you guys like are doing bottles on uh, a speedy rotary, you know, I mean, it's obviously fast, but this is much, much faster. Yeah. And, and uh, as you've seen, it's, it's really, uh, um, as I said, I, I done this half an hour before, though there's no big optimization here, uh, other than in the video where we really, uh, We'll, we'll forgive you for it. It's a second time where, where I'm just going over it and doing some polishing, uh, just to show you that you can do something like this uh, within the software and within the laser, like going, going over it two or three times, so you can make different qualities, not only the one for the for for, for fast, but also for the for the same more more 
uh, expensive looking things. Right. Also with the Galvo, also with an industrial Galvo. Thanks, Hector. Uh, Hector says, uh, sick, my employees would love this functionality when it comes to engraving color as a bonus. <laughs> is metal. So I'll try to show you the uh, HJ, this is actually the 1300, but uh, that's, a good, uh, that's a good point. You could do this on any uh, 700 virtual rotary and up. Wow. Amazing. Wow. You, you just tested it once? Yes. That's incredible. Well, lucky lucky shot, I guess. So the, the reason I say lucky shot, I mean, the, the colors, Florian, they come from, uh, the, like, what do you do to, to have the, the stainless steel change colors? Is it a frequency? I can show you something that's, I think that, that helps a little bit. So what have I done with Oh, there the, you go. So here you see the, the bottle. That's what I've done before. You see, it's a, I, I've tried a lot of this bottle already. Can, can, and, I, uh, can I have that bottle? <laughs> <laughs> no problem. <laughs> I have a lot cool of these bottle. bottles, if you like. That. <laughs> so sure, what sure. you can see here is uh, I can show you in, in the software. We have a tool here that is called, uh, if you do a new program from the template, if you switch back to the, to the software. Sorry, sorry. Uh, go, uh, show, show that again. Yep. Uh, Jay just had a quick question. Uh, yes. Is this a 3D fiber laser? So, uh, yes. no, it's not a 3D fiber. Oh, I mean, it's a 3D virtual rotary, but I mean, the, the actual engraving isn't necessarily 3D, right, Florian? Oh, it's, it's a, it's a, um, I think it's a, a question of, of naming things. Um, and I would say that you, um, that when you say 3D, uh, it can mean two different things. Uh, one thing is that you engrave like um, a stamp. You're working into the material and then you're engraving and, and do a deep engraving that, that gives you a 3D shape afterwards, like uh, uh, doing an embossing, like uh, when you have a, a, a coin and then you afterwards do a 3D. So that's, that's one thing. And, um, and this is not what we are doing. We are, we are doing something different. We are doing 3D in uh, like we have a 3D object and I work on this 3D surface. I don't work in the 3D depths. Um, I hope this clarifies it. Yeah, yeah. So when you go to this, this here, you get the, the, the constant value uh, MOPA. And then I say, uh, you have all the, the different uh, uh, settings. And that's what I've done here is just something like this. And it's, uh, it's, it comes with every speed marker installation and it gives you then a matrix where the frequency and the, 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 the power is, mm -hmm. um, is um, for each, for, for, every, for every part is, is, is different. And when you look here then at the bottle, you can see, okay, all these different uh, uh, these different things give you different, um, all the different settings give you different colors, and these different colors are, of course, the annealing colors that comes as a combination of the heat that you in introduce or that you induce with the marking, um, the stainless steel that it, uh, depending on what stainless steel uh, sh uh, consists of, how is the 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 carbon and the steel um, variation inside this and the, the starting temperature of your of your bottle. So it's not a very, very stable process, but uh, if it's just for something like, okay, I try to hit the gold or the gold yellow, then uh, it's, it's more or less fine. I would, I would not try to, to make any uh, 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 industrial absolute correct colors with it. Right. That's so really I mean, hard. Uh, so for essentially for the yellow, you, you said, okay, you did this kind of color matrix on, on your test bottle. And then you looked and you said, okay, the fourth from the, from the bottom, uh, yeah. is the yellow. Sorry, move it a little to the left, Florian. Just, uh, yeah, right there. So then. So that's like, what, what I, what I tried here. This one, I, I went for this color. Here. And that's, that's perfect. St Steven, by the way, do you have any questions or comments about any of this? Oh, no, I'm just fascinated. Uh, I mean, this yeah, is, this is fun. really, really cool stuff with the virtual rotary. 
Uh, and F Florian, you, you were going to show us uh, the non-standard objects as well? Yes, I would, I would just switch to them now. So Sure. If anyone needs the penguin. <laughs> Any, anybody from Pittsburgh, we can send it to you. <laughs> so uh, in, in this case, um, it's, it's really just an, 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 object, an object object. And I just wanted to, to show that you can mark uh, on any part. Um, the reason is, for example, if we have a big motor, and this big motor is, is standing here like uh, yeah, like this here, and you can't you can't move it around. And then somewhere on the motor, you have a, 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 a shape like this here, and you want to mark here. So normally, what you do is that you go and 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 uh, put your um, and, and move your head, or either you you make some effort that you try to move your part like this, so you can move work from the top from the top. That's that's what yeah. You there's there's do. a bunch of uh, laser hacks. Uh, Dave Stevens was showing he would do it with a Lego or with sand to to make sure that it's flat on where he wants to engrave it on the flatbeds. So now yeah. uh, with with this virtual rotary, you don't you don't need any of that, especially for like industrial applications. Again, if you have very awkward and weird parts and you need a specific marking somewhere, uh, this is perfect for that. Yeah, I think in promotional, uh, it's, a, it's a, a, a vice versa. Um, it's a connection. So promotionals tend to be uh, very simple to mark. So they are flat and you can lay them down. Um, maybe this is a possibility that you can do new, new promotionals, but in, in um, uh, the real application here is, is industrial production where you are not able to change the, 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 the things of your, the, the, the shape of your parts because right. they are not, they are not for promotional. And, um, when you imagine that you put all these, these parts inside the, the, um, the, the 1300 and want to mark them, and then you have to make some kind of, of, of tray that is very special for keeping this part in that position so that can be awkward. So th that's why I, sh I, I want to show you how you can do it here. Sure, yeah, go ahead. So it's, it's again the, 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 the same. Um, I'm doing a new 3D object. In this, in, this, uh, uh, in this case, I do an inclined plane. plane. And now I have, I have three points. Uh, Frozen up again. Sorry, right, Florian got, got stuck there again. Okay. Go, go ahead. Yeah, you're good. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm here on the on the. I'm starting here on the left, and then I go to the to the right, and the last one would be on the top. And with these three points, when I set them up, I have all things I need to to know how am I in the in 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 three dimension. So. Um, I start. I start with any of this point here. Again, I have my 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 pointer, and now I try to move this pointer here with my axis. Oh, I close the window. That is not so. That is not so nice. So okay, I move here. I don't know if if you are able. You will be able yeah, to we, we see, can see it. We can see both. Yep. So yeah. now the table is moving again. Yeah. So the table is moving again. So and now I've. I don't know. The, the red dot is very hard to see on the shiny surface. <laughs> I saw it for a second there. Uh, if you want to move the camera just a little bit uh, bottom left. Yeah, perfect. There it is. So you see some, I, think, I see you see some reflection of the... Oh, I see some It's, it's at the top there. Yeah, I see it there. Yeah. Mm. I have some some laser hack here. <laughs> So, so I have to check what is the right one. Okay, that's the 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 the, the top one is the one from the from the from the uh, inside. Um, yeah, and I, I should I should mention, guys, this is the, the, these hacks. Obviously, we're, this is just for demos. Um, ideally, you're going to make you know a thousand of these pieces. Uh, you're going to have all the configurations laid out well in advance. Yeah. And and also, of course, what I'm doing here is uh, I'm just showing you how you do 
this if you don't know anything about your objects. If you know these positions of your objects, of course, you can also uh, um, enter them in any other way. <laughs> So, can you? Uh, I'm just wondering. Can you import any like a, a CAD software object into the software? Uh, no, no, not, not yet. A, uh, not, because, a, not yet. Okay. Not yet. Uh, uh, because you, when you're doing, when you, when you imagine doing this import of the CAD files, you will have the problem again that you cannot match these CAD files afterwards with the real world. Mm. And what what I'm doing here with this setup is that this. Uh, this uh, matching just takes place. So, by by by, by finding this this point with the with the, with the pointer, so 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 hard it is. Um, I already get the the, um, the the right position in the reality. That's the the, the, the really the, the the cool thing with it. So yeah, which is um, all you want exactly. Yeah. I I want to know that this red dot that you can see on the screen. This left, yeah. left, uh, uh, but that this is really uh, the one that is now the red board point you can see on my finger. And if I apply this, if I press this apply button, now these two, this small red dot here and the one in the software are matching. And mm. uh, it's happened now. Yeah, sorry, Florian, you just lost audio for a second. OK, um, yeah. so this is really the thing, because now this this plane that is shown here is really the plane in reality and in in 3D, and it's mixed together. Right. So uh, this, this mixture is, is, is really the, the, is the, the, the big challenge in 3D, because um, you can do it by by exactly measuring your 3D object. But if you have, a, even if you have a, a, a 3D cut file from your part, you don't know how this 3D cut file has to be aligned with uh, within your in, within your workstation. And um, there are ways to do this, but these are normally, uh, they require some kind of specialist know-how. And mm. what I show you today is all the know-how you need that you can start with 3D or with the virtual rotary immediately, and uh, and that's the cool thing. So right. So you, you don't need a lot of um, you know years of experience with with 3D shapes and objects to to get started with this. Basically, what you're saying. Yeah, and and it's 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 like you see here. It's it's not very much uh, uh, additional uh, additional software you need. Right. If you if you're familiar if you're familiar with Speedmark, you have all the Speedmark things. You have this 3D projection that is okay. It's it's more like a computer game. You can move it around, so there's no nothing special you have to here do here. And the only thing that is really new is this is this one here. And when mm. you get this, you can you can start working on it. Uh, and the deeper you go, the more sophisticated you can you can go in the in 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 your parts here. So I also. Tried it directly before to do one of this year. Yeah. I, 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 I put again this the, the, the penguin on it. So mm -hmm. no, no, penguin's good. Yeah. So I hope you can see so you, it here. So you don't even need uh, to know the angle of that uh, of that kind of hill, right? Because you have those you have those yeah. three points. So all you're doing is you're you're basically setting those three points, and that measures your angle, basically. Oh, right, for you. Uh, yeah, these three points are all you need uh, on on your object. So uh, everything else is is not is not necessary to 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 start working. And, That's very cool. Um, so you don't you don't need to know the the incline. You just set the three points, and it gives you that that incline already. Yeah. And That's our. Cool. Yeah, our our machines are are normally used by people that are working, I say, in with different batches. So, uh, like like uh, chop shoppers or people that are not only having the very 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 big um, numbers of parts, but let's say 100, 200, 300, and then four or five hundred. And um, if you want to have any kind of quick setup process, then you can really go here with uh, with this with this kind of, of mechanics. Um, 
uh, as you say, like the speed marker 50, if you want to put it in line, and then afterwards you're producing five different pieces and that's all, then it's fine. Then you can do it with, with cut and with, with, with sophisticated setup because you have just to do it once. But uh, when, you, when, you, when you have different setups and you're changing your setups uh, because you're, you're doing small batches, special batches, then it's, it's, it's really uh, uh, what you need here. Wow. Okay. That looks awesome. Right, right from the first go. <laughs> wow. Incredible. And, and it's, it's really not so, it's, as I said, it's not so hard to do the, 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 the setup here. Um, the, the next one, the next one will be a little bit trickier. So. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's interesting. Okay. So we're doing a, a new project, a new projection, and in this car, uh, in this 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 new project. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, I want to do a cylinder, but I do a cylinder where I want to mark inside. So and, this is actually uh, even, this is actually perfect for for rings. Like uh, we have a lot of jewelers using uh, these gavel machines, um, okay. so this this would be great for that. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I, I've I've not tried it with a ring yet because I think my wife would not be so happy if I <laughs> stopped with working with my ring. But uh, in, in general, there is no there is no reason not not to do to work with a ring. Um, what we sometimes have from the industrial, if you have uh, uh, a vele, uh, so I don't know the technical word. That is a, a, a steel rod where you have to do some kind of barcodes inside because that's the only. Uh, position that is uh, uh, safe from from the wear from 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 uh, so right afterwards you can still read the code right um, you want to mark inside uh, of course it was possible uh, already with with a, with a standard rotary that you can mark inside uh, uh, but it's, it was a little bit difficult from the setup so it's uh, simpler here. So I, well, again, what I do is uh, is I do this this three point setup. So, um, I, I have to admit it would be simpler when when it would be not so shiny. I have to I have to admit, I have also to admit all the things I just bought from IKEA because they were very very cheap and simple for the for for doing. No, I mean uh, even even if you're doing test runs, you could just put the masking tape on top. Put your points and then take the masking tape off, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Laser hack right there. <laughs> uh, so again, I have these these two points. I'm starting with the the one on the top, uh, the one on the bottom. And uh, now here's the, the nice thing. Um, in this case, I want the 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 um, I want that the the um, how to say. The inside, the... the inside that I want that the, the after written here and that I can read it from that side. So if I mark it there, I can tell him, okay, inside is bottom and up is top. Even so, it's vice versa. Sorry, Florian, got, got stuck there again. Yeah, Stephen, go ahead. So it needs to be flipped. Oh, it's... The word you're looking for is, uh, you know. Oh, so you're looking for flip story? Yeah, 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 that's right. It it needs to be flipped, and it's neat. And and this flipping uh, is something I can do, of course, afterwards. So I have here some some setting buttons I've not shown you where you can do rotations and flips and offsets and and all this kind of things. But you can do it directly when you set up your system. So, one second, I now do a little bit of jump ahead. Uh, yeah, no worries. Okay, so there it is on the inside. Got it. Yeah, so it is inside. Why is it a little bit difficult here? I'll show you. Because when I when I uh, I move now to this position, um, 
And you can see here, this is my the, the one position, the bottom. Yeah. And this is the, the top. So now what I have is that it will, like I said, it will be on the uh, exactly flipped around. OK, interesting. So I, I want to now do it correct. So I want this to be the bottom. So I said, OK, this this position in reality I have inside should be the bottom. I flip it now. And I'll say, OK, this is not one I have to do uh, new. So I move my axis here. So then I adjust the set axis. I hope you can see anything. Yes, so, yeah, we can see it. Yeah. And then I say, OK, now I want to apply this position. The, the most simple one would be I just flip it around. But OK, if I stay original. And now you can see, if I look uh, from the front, now I turn. You see now, OK, this is how it should be here. OK, I want the Strotic Lasik Canada written up. So once on you find your, the position, you can just move around your art uh, anywhere you want, basically, and, yeah, and flip yeah, it and yeah. change it. Yeah. yeah, that's 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 completely free. So uh, you will always have this the three D preview. The, the the top of the preview will be the first point that you initialized, and the bottom will be the last point. And there you can you can move it around. And now let's see. Let's go to the. <clears throat> when you do a, a setup, like you said, with the, with the, uh, I can show you here. If you would, if you would have something Sorry. that would be uh, that would uh, do a good reflection, then you can see we are also projecting the the border marking in three D. So you will also have the the. The, the so position. that marking will be so, on the inside of the ring if it wasn't so shiny, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, next yeah. next webinar, I will have some some <laughs> tape or things that I can put in. So sounds good. Kids. I'm also. We got, your word. Be, we'll, we got your word. Will be a next uh, next webinar. <laughs> <laughs> I will do something with uh, with uh, different. Um, oops, I think. So was that it? I didn't even catch it. <laughs> oh no, it's still going. Okay. It's still good. The first, the first drive was the was the the writing, and now it's the code. Oh, got gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. That's, that's it. it. In and seconds, that's... basically. And I mean, you can you can play around with the the settings to make it like a, a darker mark or a lighter mark. I mean, depending on the, <laughs> yeah. the type of steel, right? Uh, one second, I can show you. Also, something I've done. Yeah, <laughs> this, so this was this is my camera. So. <laughs> it's from a, co a colleague of mine, so I hope he does can, not. Can I just say what a great job uh, Florian is doing, like doing all this on his own software and application uh, and camera work? So <laughs> and, and, I've, and I also have uh, the, the headphones on, so I can't move so far. <laughs> it's not easy. So, Florian, that, that's quite amazing for a one man one man uh, operation there. <laughs> so I can I can just show you here some some of the same things uh, oh, cool. where you have where you have different uh, 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 markings, Cups even yeah, and and also tried of course uh, again the colors. I have nothing here inside. One so that, so that QR code, so that was actually a white uh, and a black you, you just showed. Yeah, we, we have the possibilities with the QR codes that we do something that we call uh, cleaning. So uh, basically, you can do um, on the on one, on one part of the code, on the white code, you can do different parameters than on the black code. And therefore, uh, you, can, you can create some um, some uh, some of these good black and white effects, right. and uh, when you when you when you uh, really really uh, um, do, so if you have a little more time for the application, like here, then you can say with a good setup that you can really go uh, up around here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With a with a good quality, and 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 the, the thing, as I said before. Um, we are not only having the, the possibility that we are 
um, that we are, what you can see also, that we are wrapping around the, the, the focus, but we're also wrapping around the graphic. So it's really, if, if I would put the graphic like this and then I put it around, so there is no distortion um, of your graphic, uh, no matter if you, it, 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 it's important. It, it's nice for a penguin, but it's really important for the codes because when you have some codes like this and you want to read it with the camera afterwards, um, they have to be, uh, the codes have to be uh, rectangular. That's the yeah, uh, sorry, Florian, just a quick question from Arash if, uh, if it's not uh, completely cylindrical. So um, we actually did a part, uh, do you want to show that other penguin, uh, Florian? So Arash, yes, you can do any 3D object. Uh, no, not, not that one, sorry, Florian, the, the, weird, the weird object. That, that's yeah. in the uh, that's in the galva right now. If you want to pull it up with the camera, so Araj, you could see there. Uh, you could do any kind of uh, non-cylindrical, cylindrical, cylindrical uh, bowl, ring, uh -huh. whatever. Yeah. I, I think I know what he means. Um, the, the, the the problem is that you have when you when you have something like this here. So it's cylindrical here, but this form here is not cylindrical. So right. okay. what I've done here is that uh, with the with the, the Galvo, you have uh, a little bit more tolerances concerning your your set axis or your, your focus depth than you have with the um, with the with the plotter system. And um, you can see it here. Um, you can you can really you can really uh, go around and this is the maximum, but you can see so almost almost 180 basically. Yeah, and, and you can see here this this markings here. It's also just for the for my for, for 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 a test. But you can see what I've done here is that I used the cylinder and I tilted it a little and put it there. So, uh, but basically, I I I I tried to approximate this this weird shape here with the cylindrical form, and that's something you can do. Um, at the moment, we also cannot do something like. Uh, uh, um, how do I tell it? Uh, a mug uh, that is not not a cylinder and not a, a bowl, and but something be some, some somewhere shaped between. This is something we cannot do at the moment. But essentially, so, you, you you could split the the image and have one yeah. image on one side of the cylinder, and then where it goes down, have the other. Yeah, that's what happened. That's what happened here. So we have one right. one image on the top and one image of these coffees. Sorry, there are so many images on this bottle. Uh, <laughs> it's 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 the the coffee the coffee shapes. These are are done here with the cylinder and uh, also here with the cylinder. And uh, one, give me give you one second. I just quickly run thirty seconds and show you a bottle, a different bottle. One second. No, sorry. No worries at all. No worries at all. I mean, we won't have to. Uh, we won't have. Uh, we're at the top of the hour anyways. We won't have time to do the, the inside of the bowl, but I think everyone gets the, the concept. You could basically do um, any image, cylindrical, non-cylindrical, that kind of 180, uh, 180 shapes. Um, Steven, anything else from, from your end? Um, no, no. It's fascinating and it's been good. I enjoy it, yeah. Amazing. Awesome. Yeah, next next time I need an that assistant. Was, that was shorter than 30 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> I, next time I need an assistant. Uh, what, what uh, I tried, yeah, I wish I could be there with a the camera. <laughs> but well what, I tr what I tried here is uh, I, I tried to, to 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 see if it how how further you can do just with uh, when you have some kind of patterns that are a little bit uh, tolerant to, to 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 positioning failures. How far you can go, and and that's what you what you get there. Um, I think this is not an industrial process. This is, is, is just playing around because, as I said, we, we started having these possibilities since January, and uh, um, we, we still had we still had the possibility to see what can we do now, or what, what's 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 the, all the things we can do now with uh, uh, with this new technology. Um, and as I said, if the urn that you you mentioned before is too oddly shaped, then it will be different. Difficult, but if it, if you can if you can put it something like hey one one thing here and one thing here and then you have two two or three parts uh, uh, that you can mark. Well, yeah. I mean it's it's similar for for pass through with like the four hundred. If they're doing a door, they have to put it on one side and then like split the image and then 
you know, fin finish the door off if there's not a conveyor system. So it's kind of a similar concept. You would do something on one side, split the image, and then add it uh, to to a different uh, to a different uh, diagonal shape or, or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And awesome. and, uh, and everything you could do do from one side, you can do from in, in one part. Sorry, Stephen, were you going to say something? Um, no, I was just, um, I mean, this, this, I think we just need to reiterate it because um, this is the DS functionality that's on the, um, this is available on the DS. It's a, this is, it's a specific machine we, we're talking about now. Um, but I'm sure the technology is going to be available um, at some stage on the, not as an upgrade, but on the other machines. Well, the, the DS, mm -hmm. I mean, that's still, in the speed marker family, right? I mean, so yeah. that's 700 and 1300. Mm -hmm. um, I could just share my screen. I mean, if you guys go on our website uh, on the Galvo laser, so this 700 and the 1300 that Florian's using is this one, but uh, there's also, uh, is it on the 1600 as well, Florian? Yes, yes. Okay, so even bigger machines. So if you're doing weapons or large, large objects, um, this is basically the, the type of thing that you're gonna be using for. Uh, yeah, sorry, LCD. <laughs> uh, we usually start at 11, um, but this time we started at 10 a.m. because we had a Florian from Austria. We wanted to send him back on a Friday night to his family. So <laughs> he's not here too late. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Florian. Uh, I, just a few more questions, if if you don't mind. Uh, are, are you at uh, at one point in the future doing as speedy with MOPA technology? That's a good question. Florian, do you know anything about that? Um the, the thing is, the, the advantage of the MOPA technology um, compared to the fiber technology is with, um, especially with the annealing and with some uh, plastics. Um, and the annealing is a process that is uh, the heating of the material, and therefore you need the speed that gives you the, the, the galvo so that you can really put it... Uh, uh, as fast so that you can heat up the material on a constant level and then uh, get this heat around your, your marking. And this is something that the technology from the Speedy cannot really, uh, or, or from any plotter system cannot really make uh, visible. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I, I personally think that you will not get a big advantage if you use uh, uh, a MOPA technology or the Speedy, but I, I will pass this to to my colleagues from the. From uh, the I'm sure. Of yeah, yeah. The the MOPA mm. is really. Uh, I mean, it's slower. Like you you saw the penguin. I mean, it was two minutes yeah. versus the engraving that was like seconds. So if you're if you have a flatbed Speedy and doing a MOPA, I mean, I, I would see applications for it, even like uh, the copper engraving for for the PCB boards. I mean, it takes a long time, but it's much faster than if you do the asset etching or the old uh, way of doing uh, PCB boards. So um, I can definitely see uh, some kind of uh, benefit to this. Uh, LCD is asking, uh, I'm getting more requests for jewelry. My SP400 120 CO2 is not the machine. Uh, can I do ju jewelry with this machine and will do metal with the coatings on them, uh, which my CO2 can't? So yeah, LCD, I know I know you, you came a bit late. So what Florian actually did, he took the coating off the bottle and then he annealed it with the MOPA, with the color. So yes, you can definitely do that with the speed marker machine uh, right then. You can see the, the the penguin he did. So he did that penguin live. Uh, it, it took about two minutes to, to engrave. So the answer to your question is yes. And it's a great machine for, for jewelry as well. Awesome. I think uh, I think we'll send Florian home. I know it's it's late in Austria. <laughs> I just I want to thank uh, you obviously for for being uh, the, my co-host. Uh, Florian, any any other last words before we end this? <laughs> now, if if you have any questions, please please come to me. I I, I really enjoyed it, and I hope you have uh, you have soon any new thing on the or new webinars on the Galvo. So I, I, I'm happy to do. Well, you got you got yeah. stuck there for yeah. <laughs> you got stuck there last second, but uh, we'll definitely invite you back. Uh, I personally love this webinar. We want to do more Galvos. I think Stephen Stephen is kind of our one of our Galvo experts here in Canada, so we want to do uh, maybe an in depth run into um, I into the Galvo Speedmark software in a couple of weeks, maybe or next month. Uh, if you want to contact Florian directly, uh, you can find him on LinkedIn, uh, Florian Martin. Um, you could find him through, if you go on the main Trotec 
LinkedIn page, the, the Trotech company group. You can find them there as well. Um, yeah, people are thanking you. Uh, thank you, Florian, Stephen, Lev. Uh, Lev, can you send the Canadian pricing on the two units? Okay, I'll see I'll ask Mike to, to send it to you. Uh, once again, thank you so much, Florian. Uh, thank you for doing this on a Friday evening. Um, we right, you're welcome. It. We'll see you, see you again soon. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next week. See you. I really enjoyed yeah, it. Thanks so much. Yeah.